Hello, hello. It is Direct Mail, Monday, May 6th, 2019. Steve Cypress here, and I've got a stack, a stack, I tell you, of random assorted mail that has found its way into my mailbox over the past, I don't know, probably even two, three weeks. I just keep stacking it up in the corner and say, I'll go over that on one of these upcoming Direct Mail Mondays, and here it is. So here we go. And as always, these tips are going to cover a lot more than just direct mail. So no matter what way or ways you're using to communicate with prospects, customers, clients, patients, members, anybody at all that either is or you want to be doing business with you, I'm about to give you some tips to help you get more ideal clients, giving you more of their money so you can help more people, make more money, have more fun with less stress, because that's what business should be all about. And unfortunately, all too often, it's the opposite. Toby Mersinger is here. Happy birthday, my friend. So let's get right into it in no particular order, although I, I put a few of these in some order, but I kind of just stacked it up. So here's one I love, and I show it often when it comes in uh, Valpac mailers and that kind of stuff, is my favorite uh, windshield replacement company with the free movie theater. The while you wait, free snacks, drinks, Leather reclining seats, 17 each theater screen, 17 foot theater screen. I mean, this is, this is like what you pay 20 bucks for to go to the movies and have popcorn and sit in a fancy leather recliner chair. So it's almost like I ought to like, I don't know, just crack my windshield every day and just head over there. So that's already a fantastic thing. How many people, business owners that have a physical location, think at all about the customer experience, about the who. Using the wow strategy, the first thing you think about is the who. Not like, oh, what old dilapidated furniture can I put out there because all my competitors do, because that's just what's normally done in the industry. How about what's not normally done ever? How about going above and beyond, especially in a highly competitive field? Here in Arizona, by the way, uh, I haven't used it yet, but I'm told the comprehensive insurance here includes a free windshield replaced every single year from your insurance company because there's no grass down here, very little. There's lots of rocks though, and they're always kicking up all over the highway. They're always all on the side of the highway, so it makes sense that they kick up. They hit windshields when you're going 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, whatever. And so it's just included every year. They're like, every year, Steve, just go get your windshield replaced. I'm like, well, I guess we don't drive a lot or we don't drive in the right place or behind the right gravel carrying trucks or whatever. We don't have lots of cracks in the windshield. But when we do, I'm going over to going to the movies and I'm getting $120 cash back while I do it. Oh, that's mobile when they come to me. If I go in the shop, I get $140 cash back. I mean, come on now. I'm sure there's there's weasel claws like if and what. and But I mean, it, there really isn't. It just says plus guaranteed with insurance approved. So as long as the insurance approves it, I guarantee to get $140 cash back plus Free wiper blades. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost as if the owner of this thing is, is my client. They're waking up every day and thinking, how can I add some more value? I, and I make that offer even more irresistible. I know I'll give $80 cash back. No, $100. No, $110. No, $120. No, $140. Oh, and free wiper blades. And I'll guarantee it. And I'll put thousands of dollars out and buy reclining chairs and 17-foot screen and feed them popcorn and snacks and drinks and have free Wi-Fi and holy crap, I'll just make my place the only place to come. The only place to come. And on the back, they want to do window tinting, I guess, you know, light to dark, whatever, 20% off this, that, whatever. It's guaranteed for lifetime or whatever and prevents lifetime warranty. But oh, come on now. This is just fantastic stuff. Uh, I'm sure I'll find another one of their things when and if our windshield cracks. Down here, actually, it's it's when. Jeremy Danley is here. Great seeing you. And Leo, long time. Hope you're doing okay. Now, here's one that is just silliness. This one I received. Now, first of all, even if you're doing this every door direct mail thing and you pick your zip codes, you don't want to be mailing. I mean, I have no problem if you're selling cheap crap, but if you're selling cheap crap, you might not want to attempt to sell it to affluent people. We just don't want cheap crap. I, even if it's free, I don't want it. I don't want cheap meat. I don't want it for free. I mean, if my beautiful wife, Michelle, came home and said, you know, hey, I bought the worst possible quality food and dinner is on. Like, <laughs> we don't want it. So when you got like, you, all you can talk about is your low price for your food that actually obviously must not be that great. And then you're telling me you, I get $5 off. Now, first of all, who 
purchase only forty dollars. I mean, when's the last time I didn't see a two or three hundred dollar bill uh, charge from a Costco or even from a supermarket or whatever? My beautiful wife Michelle goes shopping. It's not forty dollars. So this is to broke people who think five dollars is good, forty bucks is a lot to spend, who want the lowest price, so therefore the worst food they can possibly have. And then you got this map here with your locations all throughout Phoenix from Surprise, which this is Phoenix. Surprise is northwest of Phoenix down to Gilbert, southeast of Phoenix. There's got to be a couple of hours of driving in between here. Like, what are you? Notice how Scottsdale, which is this whole area here, no locations. Take the hint. There are no locations, at least that smart. So you have no locations where affluent people are. But why are you sending this out? to people that are just not going to respond or, el or else I must not know my neighbors. Like, why would anyone in this area respond to this thing? So that's just uh, silliness. And now to the right who, to the right target who, that thing's going to work like crazy. You send that out to the brokest, ghettoist, you know, trailer park, whatever area town, and you tell them, hey, if you can somehow scrounge together 40 bucks and come into our store, we'll make it only 35. And we'll give you all the cheap ramen noodles and generic macaroni and cheese you want because that's the kind of stuff you like and we got the low price on that okay next uh this one i got and i was intrigued this uh it's got a little forwarding thing because i don't know how long i've had this or it was just mailed to our last address we moved in december so forwarding is still taking effect for a little while and uh it's interesting because it's not a regular envelope right something i teach a lot an odd size envelope gets attention plus it's got some some girth width bulk to it, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, thickness, so it stands out, gets some attention here, uh, seems like some kind of invitation of some kind, and I have to admit, I cheated a little bit and said, what's this all about, and I, I did a little online search. If you're better than me at going to a search engine and typing in the name Christian Kornven, because that just name seems strange to me, I was impressed that it's what's known as sneak up mail, okay, no return address of a business, so it just seems like something personal. Uh, however, they ruin it by being ridiculous enough to put a Pitney Bowes indicia on there instead of a, a live stamp. But if it had a live stamp and it was hand written instead of a window envelope, they might have gotten away with, hey, this seems really personal. Like, I don't know. I don't remember meeting Christian Kornkven in Chicago. We happen to live for years in Chicago. I don't know if this is going to notice that we did that since it's sent here in Arizona. But like, hey, who's that guy, Chris Kornkven? I don't remember him, it's some person, but in this case, no, it's not. It's clearly something business related, and so it's not that well done. Second of all, as I was saying, uh, till I rudely interrupted myself, that I looked up this name Christian Kornkven, and unless you're better than me at search, I could not find a single human being with the name Christian Kornkven. So I found one guy named Eric Christian Kornkven, who lives in California somewhere, and who knows what he does, but not only was there no, no Christian Kornkven, but there was no Kornkven at this address in Chicago, Second of all, this address in Chicago happened to be a business uh, called something like Payday Loans. So another miss uh, uh, targeting here to send something for a payday loan to an affluent neighborhood. Payday loan for those that don't know, and hopefully if you don't know, I only know them from having clients uh, or from my door-to-door -door sales days walking through uh, not so nice areas of town with these payday loans, people actually are so broke and so bad at managing their money that they can't wait till they get their paycheck. They can't even wait to like put it in the bank and wait a day or two to cash it. They actually go to a place, unbelievably, and they pay some ridiculous, usurious, usurious, whatever the word is. Uh, and I even went to law school and I don't know how to pronounce usury, uh, but that means overcharging interest for a loan. So they pay some ridiculous amount of like 15, 20, 30% uh, for a loan. And, uh, it is not. I am totally wrong. Holy crap. I am totally, <laughs> totally blown away and totally wrong. This is from a client of mine. So what the heck? This is from a client of mine. I, now I got to ask him, who the heck is Christian Kornkven? Maybe that's actually a guy. And that address must be in a strip plaza where he's also got an office address because it's, uh, holy manoli, it must be a couple of months I've been holding on to this thing. It's from a client of mine to my beautiful wife, Michelle, saying happy birthday from all of us at, well, I'll just tell you the name of this company, Family Wealth Legacy. It's my financial advisor. 
Uh, we hope your special day is full of fun and celebration. So he's a client of mine and where we have parked our uh, life savings with, and he does a fantastic job, by the way. And uh, it is a $100 gift certificate to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse from fantastic Matt Piercy of the Family Wealth Legacy, where I highly suggest, well, actually, he's not taking on any more clients. He actually sold his, his financial uh, business uh, for $26 million, and he's no longer taking on clients, but we're grandfathered in. So he flew me up to his office a few months ago, and I signed some papers, and I'm grandfathered into his new thing, but he's not taking, I can't refer my clients or anyone else to him, and he just makes tons of money for people. Uh, and so there you go. Hundred dollar gift card. My beautiful wife Michelle's birthday is in February. So holy cremoli, I've let this sit here for a couple of months going, I gotta show that piece of nonsense on a direct mail Monday and holy cremoli, there's the really nice envelope from Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. So I totally blew that one. So uh I can help with a few of the things there that would have gotten me. I almost chucked this thing. Holy, I came real close to chucking it out. So, hey, Matt, I got to help you out next time we talk with how to actually have a gift card sent. Not so it seems like really bad junk mail with a fake name and gets thrown out. Although, what would he care? He already paid the 100 bucks either way. Well, I guess he would care because he wants us to know that he loves us. And even though it's, you know, 100 bucks, it's 100 bucks. It's a dinner at Ruth's Chris. If they're, I'm sure there's got to be one in the Phoenix area. We're the fifth largest city in America. There's got to be one of these, at least one of this chain. I Years ago when I ate red meat. I loved Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. I still eat the sides, and I'll eat some other stuff there. My beautiful wife, Michelle, will get the old petite filet that she likes to get, and uh, we'll have a blast. Thank you, Matt. Okay, next. Speaking of free dinner, see, I did arrange these a little bit. This one is so poorly done, it's beyond poorly done. So, first of all, nobody cares, and nobody knows what your logo is. Nobody cares, TNBS. What is that? New TV station? Do they carry NBA games late at night? Like. TNBS with a globe in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now I have another fantastic client, Jeff Sharp in Lincoln, Nebraska, but I, I'm pretty sure this isn't from him because this is just horrible. So this is, again, sent to an affluent neighborhood with free dinner for some reason in quotes. So that means not really free? Like what? <laughs> well, we know it's not really free because my time is worth a heck of a lot more than a dinner at the Golden Corral. So yeah, 10 bucks or 12 bucks for all the crappy food you can eat. Might as well go to this supermarket and get some, so I can get crappy food at home or I can get crappy food in a restaurant. Yikes. Neither one belongs landing on the doorstep in a fluent gated community where we live. Golden Corral, it couldn't pay me to go there. My time is worth a heck of a lot more than the 12 bucks or dinner for two. Oh wait, and what does it say? Dinner for you and your spouse and up to two adult friends. So it's dinner for four, as if I would be embarrassed myself enough to tell any of my friends, hey, why don't you come to Golden Corral for a free dinner? Ouch. Of course, I'll just take him out to Ruth's Chris. Uh, but anyway, so uh, entertaining health seminar, no obligation. Terrible. Reservations required, space limited, call now, 21 or older, please, call toll free. Never use a toll free number when you're a local business. There's a great tip for every business, for every situation. Um, and uh, you'll depress response. Test it, at least. Prove me wrong. Yeah, but I've never had anyone prove me wrong on that. You think, oh, toll free number sounds good. Yeah, not if you're a local business. If you're national, if I'm calling Amazon.com or something, I want a national and toll free doesn't matter anymore anyway because nobody pays. What, what is this, the 80s? Nobody pays long distance charges anymore, pretty much. Uh, unless you're in one of these broke neighborhoods, maybe, where these things go to or should go to. But on the back, black and white, uh, in about one hour, you will learn what some prominent physicians and major medical centers have known for years about helping our bodies. In a terrible headline. I mean, I get the gist. It's a good concept. But, man, there's like, you know, go somewhere, but get Get some help from somebody. Call me. Go to helpfromsteve.com, whoever this is, and I will give you a, a effective headline that says the same thing but says it effectively so you get a response. Discussion topics to include aches and pains, lack of energy, swelling of joints, back and hip pain. Okay, I get it. It's an entertaining health seminar at the Golden Corral. So if you want to attract really 
bad clients, low-level clients who like low-level stuff and would be pleased with a meal from the Golden Corral, think that's great, then, then do this. But otherwise, that is a total disaster of that thing. Okay, next. Uh, this is sent to our address, but a previous, like I said, we moved here in December. It's a previous resident. And it's from uh, DMD, which I'm pretty sure is dentist. I've had plenty of those clients, Dr. Men Medical Dentistry or something like that, DMD. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe this is a bill. I hope it's a bill because if this is a piece of direct mail attempting to solicit business, this is horrible. This is just horrible. So I can only imagine how bad. The material will be on the, on the inside if it is actually attempting to solicit a total stranger to become a client of a dentist, and no, it actually is a bill. With a return envelope, by the way, uh, Doc, you ought to put a stamp on there. Spring for the, I know they owe you uh, $16.20, they owe you $16.20. What is going on with the low price stuff? Now, this can't be. Oh, because they got insurance. So we got uh, 29 and 68. So we got $97 worth of services, but insurance paid 21.99 and 42.80. So 64.79, leaving $16.20. Only 30 days passed through, which is very strange. The person not must have not given them the return address because this person does not live at this address and hasn't lived here in the last 30 days. Although this is dated March 29th, yeah, pretty recent, a month ago. They did not live here a month before that. But anyway, you want to get that 1620. An easier way is give them a phone number to call, give them a web, which is, you got your phone number up in the corner, but give them a website to go to with easy pay, uh, or at least put the 50 cent, 55, whatever it is now, put a stamp on there and put your, well, I guess they put their return address, I don't know, put, put a stamp on there. Yeah. Or, or, or even better, you can do, you can go to the post office and you can get a permit to have pre printed, uh, address uh, uh, postage put on your return envelopes. And the good thing about that is you're already paying for the printing on there. You won't get any more charge from the printer for a little more ink in the corner. And you don't get charged the postage unless it is that envelope is used. So you do get the permit, but then you can always put on there no stamp, no return uh, posted necessary. Uh, you know, blah, 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 and you're more likely to get a response. Okay, so that was, in fact, a bill, which I'm glad to hear. Um, that that was not a promotional piece in that kind of an envelope, because although that would never get opened and never get opened with the right mindset. It's open with the mindset of, oh, what's this? It looks like a bill. But uh, $16.20, write that thing off, yeah? All right, next, Valpac, Valpac. All right, I always open this one just because $100 could be in the envelope. I don't know anyone's ever gotten it. Blake is here. Good seeing you. Been a long time. Hope you are doing well. Uh, I don't know if it's hundred dollars cash. I doubt. Hundred dollars check. Hundred dollars certificate. If it's the same size as all the rest of these things, large or smaller, does it stand out? This is like a Willy Wonka chocolate bar, golden ticket thing. I don't know, but uh, for the one they must print every ten years, I never seem to get it. Uh, the one thing I'm looking for is that movie theater glass company, because there's always a few. See, there's a, oh, that's broken glass. There it is, windshield thing, $100, $100, you know, gift. This is competitive. Oh, the rhinos. I always save the rhinos. We'll save them up here. That's like number four or five of those with the rhinos. All right, next. Uh... I know we've got to have a couple more of these glass repair guys in here with their $100 off, $120 off, whatever. $40. i watch a movie. Sit in a leather chair. These places are compete. Where is that glass? Don't not. First time I've seen him in here. Maybe I went through quickly and, and missed his thing. I'm not going to go through them all. Wow, that's too bad. I have an irresistible off like that. Uh, once you, 
you get that down, 